Hey, this is Malachi, the Artist One. I want to talk about the latest issue with Hendrix, one being a lawsuit that was uh, lost in regards to, oh, what's his name? Um, Andrew. Andrew uh, and Leon, which he tied himself into Leon, and as the lawyer was Osinski, I believe. And this whole issue with Hendrix, and I was having a discussion online. And by the way, I've been involved in Hendrix for a long time. And most people that are kind of in the world of Hendrix, they all know who I am. So you may not, but I'm going to explain to you what I've done and what I do. And anyways, as we go on, then you'll understand. So uh, I'll also link a blog called uh, The Voodoo. Um, Curse of Jimi Hendrix... Uh, I can't remember, but look at it below and I'll have a link there to explain to you all this stuff. But anyways, I've been involved in Hendrix for a long time. Uh, I've dealt with, uh, I had a Hendrix coffee line with Leon. And, and real quickly, I will say this. This coffee line, see, I'm like the only guy that's never been sued. But this coffee line was created by myself and Leon and a guy named uh, Pete Sykoff, which was kind of an acting manager with Leon at the time. And at that time, it was uh, probably 2007, I was actually working with Bob Hendricks, which he has now passed away, and Faith Hendricks and, and a few other people, and actually trying to put together something where I was going to bring the family back together. Because as I'm going to explain to you, it's such a convoluted issue. It's just, it's amazing because the, the deal with Andrew that he just lost $2 million or whatever, um, which I knew he would lose. And uh, before him was uh, Craig Diefenbach, who also lost like $3.2 million, something like that. in the Hendrix vodka deal, which I have one of the vodka things over here. Right. <laughs> uh, I actually had a deal with uh, Janie. Well, it was actually it was through Bob and through um, Henry. Uh, Henry Brown is uh, was Bob's brother. He's also involved in Hendrix, and uh, to settle with him and then just pay him. Uh, it's like a million five or something like that or whatever, and then he could sell off the remaining bottles. Anyways, at that time, uh, Craig Diefenbach thought that uh, he, was, he wasn't going to lose. They had a strong trademark, blah, 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 all this kind of crap. And um, obviously he lost. Well, I told him he would. I also told Andrew that he'd lose too, uh, which because he's basing it off of trademarks. And in the marijuana industry, there's no trademarks that are even offered. So I don't know why people... Right. They just never listen to me. They never listen to me. But here's the strangest thing I want to point out to you about the Hendrix world, right? And this may be a shocker to some people. Obviously, the Hendrix world is not being ran by anybody of blood. Janie Hendrix is an adopted stepsister. Adopted stepsister. There's no Hendrix in her blood whatsoever. But I'm going to go beyond that because I was having a conversation with another friend of mine who's also involved in Hendrix. His name is Stefan. And he, of course, if he ever saw this video, he would say, yes, I know Gwen. But he does not believe what I'm about to say. But what I'm about to say is factual. It's factual and nobody wants to talk about it. Because it, because it creates a huge big can of worms and it really shows the mystery behind Jimi Hendrix and, and in some ways why he's the most popular guitarist ever in history and why he's still to this day uh, uh, very much in the, the, in the music world. I mean, it, it's very interesting. Because the mystery is far more than his creativity, far more than who he was, but far more to, in reality, this whole family, which is interesting. So Jimmy, we're told that Jimmy's father is Al Hendricks. That's not true. Because Jimmy was born Johnny. 
and they called him Buster. And he, Al did not like the name Johnny because Johnny was Lucille's a boyfriend, right? I don't know if any of you know this, but you need to start putting all this together. So it was always thought that Jimmy was not Al's kid. And I'm going to tell you why he was not Al's kid and how this whole Jimmy Hendrix estate where Al gave rights to Janie. Let's write her name in this thing. When Al died, supposedly gave rights to Janie, the adopted, the adopted stepsister um, from Al's second wife. I can't remember her name. Right? Uh, and, and in reality, Leon was supposed to have a percentage of the estate. And, and, and surprisingly, just, just before he died, Al granted everything over to Janie. This is like a movie, isn't it? But here's the thing. Al never had any rights to grant of Jimmy's music to begin with. Never, ever had the right. And the only reason really why Al got any of this is because of a man named Paul Allen who gave a lot of money to help Al get back and help him get the rights back to Jimmy's music. Because there's a lot of other people that had different aspects of rights. One was Ed Chalpin. I worked with Ed Chalpin on a couple songs back in probably 2007, and that, those got all tied up with legalities too. But see, I'm still, like I said, I'm the only one who ever actually put together a thing to where Janie was on board, Leon was on board, Bob Hendricks was on board, and a lot of the other family members were on board. Because why? Because people who know me within this world know that I've always tried, even though what I'm telling you is, is hardcore truth, and I'm going to prove it even more, even though I know all these things, I still think whatever family is there, it's important to keep that aspect true. Unlike, unlike the recent lawsuit with Andrew, which Andrew is a psychopath, in my opinion, uh, because he thinks he owns everything. He almost became like Diefenbach. They thought there were Hendrix, you know, they I, I own everything. I, 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 this, that. So you don't own nothing. It still has to go back to the family. Okay, this is why I'm going to tell you Jimmy is not Al's kid, right? This is it. And first of all, in reality, any of Jimmy's estate money should have went to his two kids, uh, Tamika and James, right? Which one of them became a woman, so there's like, you know, that's a whole other story within itself. But those two never really got anything. And then we have these other kids that have popped up. One is a guy out of Canada. He said he's Jimmy's kid. His name is Johnny, and he's, he's not Jimmy's kid. And then uh, um, Jasmine, which uh, I don't think she cares. She was told she's Jimmy's kid, but I don't think she cares either way. So Jimmy, when he was born, right? Obviously, they're born from the womb of Lucille. So that's the connection. But Jimmy is tall and lanky. Just like Leon is tall and lanky. Long fingers. Sometimes I think Leon and Jimmy have the same father, but there's a whole thing about that Leon's dad was not Al either. This is why Janie cut and has always tried to destroy Leon. Al is short and stocky, and as I'm going to point out, with these three kids here, that you never hear of, one died, I think two died, I don't know, I, 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 I can't remember that much, I know Joseph is, I believe Joseph is still around, I don't know, 
Don't don't quote me on that. I did I didn't look that up. I probably should have looked it up. But all these three these three children and even Leon was put into foster homes. These three were given up for adoption. Like I said, I believe one died uh, early at an early age. But one thing about all these three kids here is they all were. Um, how to say this politely, they were deformed. Uh, they had uh, mental issues. Joseph, in particular, he, he had problems. Actually, Joseph looked just like Al. And if you ever met Al, and I met Al uh, uh, numerous times. The last time I met Al was at, a, uh, was at a George Clinton concert, and he was there in a wheelchair. Al Hendricks had deformities, too. Al Hendricks had six fingers. Al Hendricks, I believe, also had six toes. Deformed. He was deformed. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but I'm trying to get you to understand this. He was deformed. And all the children that Lucille had from Al that were legitimate Al's seed were also deformed. That's fact. Lucille, when she had Jimmy, Jimmy wasn't, didn't have any deformities. You need to understand that Lucille wanted kids. Lucille did love Al, but Lucille wanted kids. She wanted her seed to continue. Right? Just as men want their seed to continue. But she knew by having Al seed, it would come out to be like this. She did give him three kids, but everyone was deformed. Now, Leon, obviously Leon and Jimmy and these three children, they have the same mothers, right? So there's certain aspects of all these that share the same, you know, as we all look similar to our parents. And the thing is, is that uh, these three had all deformities. These two did not. I've known Leon now for a long time. I can tell you, Leon does not have any deformities. So Leon, it was told that his father, uh, I can't remember who he was either, but, um, but Janie knows, <laughs> this is, the, this is the, what's always interesting about everything, is Janie knows that Al is not Jimmy's father. Janie's also brought up in court that Al was not Leon's father. This is why Leon doesn't deserve anything from the Jimmy Hendrix estate. That's why she wants to get rid of him. But Janie knows, because this is why she hates Leon so much, because these three here are taken, Joseph's been taken care of by the state. The, obviously, these three uh, uh, were uh, adopted out, okay? So they're not the issue. Joseph has been taken care of, so he's been fine. But here's, here's something you need to understand. Janie has always known that Leon was not from the blood of Al because of DNA. However, however, because Lucille's grave was hidden. I don't know if any of you know this, but it was only found maybe about 20 years ago that they found her gravestone, which is about a stone's throw away from the gravesite of Jimi Hendrix. Because here's the thing, in Jimi Hendrix's uh, gravesite, there's, his mother's not buried there. His mother's not buried next to him. Every single one of those grave uh, stones around Jimi Hendrix's stone, his, his big thing that he has there, they're not even related whatsoever to Jimi Hendrix at all. They're all Janie's side. Janie is half Japanese. Right? I know, I, don't, I know it says Jap. Don't, it's just shortening it down. Don't get, don't get too caught up with that. But none of them around Jimmy's uh, tombstone are Jimmy's relatives. Not one. Not one is a true blood relative. Not one. One thing about the coffee line when I was doing this is I was trying to get through, um, um, when I was talking with Bob Hendricks when he was still alive, 
Of course, he, of course, later, uh, Leon, Leon did a stupid thing and, and gave his rights, uh, part of his rights of this coffee company to Craig Diefenbach, which totally screwed up everything because everybody was trying to win the lawsuit against Janie. But see, Janie has all the cash, right? She's got all the money because of what uh, Paul Allen did. Right? Paul Allen put up all the money, gave the rights to Al. Al dies, gives all the money and rights to Janie. But like I said, Al was never Jimmy's father. And the only re and, and the reason why she hates Leon so much is because Janie knows that Jimmy is not Al's kid. So therefore, if anybody from the family would have rights to the Jimmy Hendricks estate, it would be Leon. Why? Because Jimmy and Leon shared the same mother. Because Leon's father was not Al, nor was Jimmy's father Al. And they know because they have DNA from Al, right? Because they dug him up and took the DNA and they know that it does not match Leon. But here's the thing. They've never taken the DNA from Jimmy and matched it up to Al. Or maybe they have, but they've always kept it secret. You don't hear anything about it because that was never brought up in court either. That's the truth about all this stuff. You see how messed up it is? You see how screwed up it is? And then you have... People like, people like Andrew out there trying to do stuff, thinking he owns the trademarks of Hendrix, all this kind of crap. Leon gets involved, but Leon doesn't own. This guy, I think, owned like 70% of that company, and Leon had 20. Of course, he's going to lose. You know the reason why? We never had any issues with this coffee line other than Leon gave it to uh, Diefenbach for, for a small time. The reason why Janie's never tried to come after me because every deal I've done with Leon has been a 51-49. Leon gets 51%, I get 49. That's how it works. Unfortunately, Leon's always been suckered into Andrew because Andrew would go out and raise money to all these people thinking that he would own the trademarks so he would get money from other people to support that right to get all this and to own the Hendrix empire that's worth millions. And there's other people that have been involved with the Hendrix and I've written that in my blog and I have their name and all that kind of stuff. And I even go into further some of the issues that I've dealt with with Leon and trying to put together some products and lines with Leon. But the latest lawsuit and the latest uh, loss basically hurts Leon. But here's, here's one thing. If Janie ever watches this video or any of your lawyers, whatever, you have my number. Go ahead, call me. I don't give a crap. Um, let me tell you something, Janie. I've known Leon for a long time. Me and Leon just don't discuss things about Hendrix. I could care less about that. Me and Leon really talk biblical stuff. We talk about, you know, just life itself, you know, living. I like Leon. Leon's a smart guy. You know, I, I feel sorry he's gone through his ups and downs with the uh, alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. But he's got a good woman with him, Jasmine. She's, she's awesome. She's saved that dude. But I want to tell you something, Janie. If you've gotten to the end of all this, your hatred towards Leon, it's got to end. We've got to end it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Through all my conversations with Leon, he knows that he's not Al's son by blood. But he has never once respected Al. He will always quote the Bible. The Bible says the man who is raising you is your father. 
And he always respected Al, even though Al got rid of him, had him, had him off, uh, had him in foster homes and foster, he still respected Al and loved him as a father. Okay? I want that to be very clear. Another thing needs to be extremely clear on Leon. Leon has never once said anything derogatory towards you. To me, never once. Never once. He says he regrets that you feel the way that you do. Uh, he, re you know, he sometimes regrets uh, actually taking care of you in some ways, but I, I get it. You know, you, everything you do is out of, out of such hatred towards him because you know that this, that this is all a lie. And you know if it ever really got out that you lose this whole empire, everything would go away because money is such, oh man, I've seen the curse of Jimi Hendrix and the voodoo that it causes. You cannot imagine how people get it's a sickness. It really is. Sick. Sick. All these things are sick. All just to destroy and take away from really the... These two were inseparable when they were children. They really were. And, you know, it's sad because a lot of people give a lot of crap to Leon because he's associated himself, unfortunately, probably through necessity, because look, he's the brother of the most famous person really in the world. I mean, if you really think about it, just having that association is massive. It's massive. And that's what sickness makes these people want to have that association. They all want. Even Al wanted to have that association. Even Al kind of lied to himself saying that he was his son. But Al was a little short, stocky guy with six fingers and six toes. Come on. You're going to ask Leon about the story on how Jimmy and Leon used to scare the neighbor kids when their dad was sleeping? The, I've got five, but he had six. Anyway. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I just... After this last lawsuit, I don't think there'll be any, I, don't, I can't see anybody else ever getting involved in Hendrix. Hope to God that nobody does. Me and Leon, no problem. I'll do business with him. Why? Because Janie can never come after Leon with me. Good luck with that. Because I'll bring up all this stuff. I'll bring it up. And I won't have uh, Osinski as a lawyer. I'd fight you myself. And I'd win too. I'd win. And you know it. But I don't want to do that. Leon doesn't want to do that. None of us want to do that. What we want is for you to stop. Stop. Stop the battles. Let a guy who's in his 70s finish his life in peace and harmony, okay? And good remembrance and, and something of value. Anyways, for people who don't understand the world of Hendrix and don't understand any of it, I'm trying to explain it the best I can in this form and sit in a blog. I want to show you something too. I ran across these a couple, a couple of weeks ago. There's a line of coffee that we did. Kind of the old stuff. And it was roasted quite a long time ago. Woo-wee. Hendrix Star Spangled Banner Morning Roast. That was one of our lines. Here's the organic fair trade line that we had. One of them. Still had the big old bag. Hendrix Brothers Organic Fair Trade Booty Child. It's all got to stop, people. I, I, I hope the voodoo finally ends. The voodoo was big with the old, uh, I don't know, hope you can see that. The voodoo was big with the old uh, vodka. And they, and this was, this was uh, uh, Andrew getting involved with the e-juice line. And these guys are scumbags. I already talked about them on one. Uh, they, they should be sued by Janie. I would love that one. 
Uh, I guess I'll have to sue him. But um, hey, there, there's the truth about Hendrix. There, there is something that blows your mind. Al was not his father. Leon was not his father. The only ones that share any bloodline is Lucille. Leon and Jimmy, they were brothers born in the same womb. Janie has nothing to do with anything. Her hatred towards Leon because she knows the truth. She knows the truth. She knows that Al, this was Al's blood. These three were Al's offspring. All three of them deformed, just like Al was. She loved Al. She gave him three kids, but she could not allow her womb. It's like, it's like the animal kingdom, right? Uh, they pick mates for certain reasons, you know. Certain animals will pick only the strongest male. But in, in humans, it's not always like that. We get caught up in, in emotion. We get caught up in, in, in the aspect of love. Instead of what the kind of the basic animal instinct that is to carry on through your offspring. Lucille wanted her offspring to be strong. And guess what? Became one of the strongest individuals in the history of world. It's amazing, isn't it? If you really think about it. But this whole story, the whole story, and this is factual. So anybody can try to take me to court and he'd love to find out on that one. I've even talked to Leon about it a long time ago and he says, yep, you're right. Matter of fact, Leon, I think was a little, I think that's why we have a bond because he knows for one, he knows that I'm a preacher for one. He knows I'm a, a study of theology for two. And he knows that I'm really the only one who's never caught the voodoo. Now, there's a few other people that haven't, but I haven't caught the voodoo. She's got it bad. He's got it bad. Also, through Janie, she's, I mean, she just destroyed so many lives with different things. Like the Aline twins. I saw another post about, um, and I met the, uh, the twins uh, a couple times back in New York. Uh, one of them passed away, unfortunately. Uh, but they had, uh, they were going through some hard times, so they gave Janie a uh, guitar that, that Jimmy gave them. And, uh, but she said she'd give it back to him, uh, sell it back to him or something like that within a certain amount of time. And he wanted to buy the guitar back. She wouldn't sell it to him. So she knows that Al, she knows that all this is just a, just a pack of lies. The only truth out of any of this, the only truth is Lucille bared a son named Jimmy, bared a son named Leon. Whether they're from two different fathers, it does not matter. They're from the same womb. Those two are brothers. And they don't care about any of Jimmy's other kid. They've already signed away all their rights and everything else. So, you know, but... He is the patriarch of Hendrix. He is the one that should be running the show. Now, Leon's too trusting. I like Leon. I don't really have anything pretty anything bad to say. Leon has uh, never treated me bad. You know, we've always got along. We've had our ups and downs. It's like anything we have our ups and downs. But I... I I, I like Leon. He's a good guy. He's always been good to me. So anyways, it's enough yapping. It's half hour long. But hopefully, if you've learned anything about the Jimi Hendrix industry, the, the estate, the history, uh, stuff like that, I hope I've enlightened you a little bit. And uh, maybe at some point in time, I'll even release some of the music that I have. But I'd probably have to battle that. So I might just wait to release some of the Jimi Hendrix music that I have. Well, she's long gone. Malachi signing out. Church. Well, I'm not Church of State. I'm the artist one. I have two. I have another channel. So, anyways, hey, how about this? I'll I'll still end it with how I ended all my other channels. 
Hug your kids, call your parents, go see your neighbor, repent and be baptized. Goodbye.